Welcome to the second part of this WiseL tutorial series on basic programming in Visual C Sharp. In this part of the series we're going to talk about how to work with projects and solutions in Visual Studio and we'll begin the video by explaining how you can create a brand new Windows Forms project. We'll then look at the Solution Explorer window to help explain how your project files are organised and also show you where those project files are actually stored on your machine. We'll show you how you can add, remove and exclude items in a project and also talk about creating folders to help you to manage the items that you add. We'll show you how you can move items between those folders and also what happens when you rename those items. The final part of the video will show you how you can close and reopen projects that you've been working on, which sounds a little bit patronising but there are one or two things that are well worth knowing about that process. So it's a fairly short video, but let's get started. Before we can start creating any objects and writing any code, we need to create a project in which to put them. So to do that in this version of Visual Studio, head to the File menu and choose New Project. There's a keyboard shortcut you can use there as well, Control and Shift and N. And when you select that option, you'll be presented with a new project dialog box. This dialog box provides you with a list of templates that you can use to build new projects with. The exact list that you'll see here will depend on which version and which edition of Visual Studio you have installed. So for this video series we're going to be using Visual Studio Express 2013 for Windows Desktop. Of course we're going to be working in the Visual C Sharp programming language, so if I select that category I'll see a list of four different templates available. And the one we're going to go for is a Windows Forms application, which gives us a nice compromise between something which looks relatively visually appealing, but also isn't too difficult to code for. We're just going to be focusing on the basics of writing C Sharp code. I can choose a different location for my project, so I'm not going to go for the default location. I'm going to hit the Browse button down here and choose my desktop for now. And I'm also going to need to provide a more useful name for my project rather than Windows Forms Application 1, which is a little bit boring. So let's remove that. The example we're going to build to demonstrate all the basic code is to do with a basic, very, very basic, in fact, dating agency application called Wise Owls Dating Agency. And that's called Woda for short. So I'm going to call my project Woda, store it on the desktop, make sure it's a Windows Forms application, and finally click the OK button to create the project. Now this might take a little while the first time you attempt to do it, but eventually you'll be presented with a screen roughly similar to this one with your project created. When you create a project based on a template, you'll usually get a few items created for you automatically. So in the case of our basic Windows Forms application, we get a single form called Form 1, which is opened up into the design view in the main area of the screen, and is also listed in the Solution Explorer. So the Solution Explorer shows you a list of all of the items included in your project currently. So we can see Form 1 is listed here, and we see another item called Program.cs. This is the main program that runs when you launch your application. It tells the, the, the application which form to show to begin with and other various setup properties. You can close and open items using the Solution Explorer um, and the, the crosses in the top right hand corner of each tab. So if I close my Form 1 design view down, if I want to bring it back, I can simply double click on it to do so as well as being able to double click on an item to show what's stored inside it. It's also possible in Visual Studio 2013 and 2012 to auto preview items. So if I just click once on program.cs, what will happen is I'll get a little preview window popping up that shows me the items in the program file. We're not going to talk about the code in much detail at this point. I actually find that feature quite annoying. I usually know that I want to open up an item and I can double click on it myself to see what's inside it. So the auto preview thing for me is, is a little bit annoying. I'm going to close the, uh, the preview window down and to turn off that preview view I can click this button at the top of the Solution Explorer. So what that means is when I click on items now they don't automatically show me any details. If I wanted to open it I can simply double click and it will open up into the main view. And once again I can close it down by clicking the cross in the top right hand corner. So the Solution Explorer window shows you a list of all the items contained within your project. The very, very top node is something called the Solution, which is called Woda, and tells us it contains a single project. A Solution is simply a container for multiple projects. So the one project that we have contained within our Solution is called Woda, and this is our c -sharp Windows Forms application. The Solution doesn't necessarily always appear by default in the Solution Explorer. Earlier versions of Visual Studio don't tend to show that by default. So if you wanted to turn that on to make sure that you could see your Solution, not that you really need to, but if you wanted to, you could head to the Tools menu and choose Options. And in the Projects and Solutions category, 
you can find the always show a solution checkbox and as long as that's checked it will always show you the solution at the top. This can be kind of handy if you're inserting more than one project into a solution but for now we're going to leave ours with a single project. All of the items contained within your solution are stored in the folder that you chose to create when you first started the project. So if I browse quickly to my desktop by holding down the Windows key and pressing D, I'll see that I've got a Woda folder on my desktop. And if I double click to open it up, it's going to show me that I have a solution file. Now the solution file contains information about what items, what projects are contained in the solution. Within this folder as well, I'll have subfolders for each project which belongs to the solution. So if I double click on the Woda folder, it will show me a list of the items contained within the Woda project. And if I can just quickly display the Visual Studio window and the Woda folder at the same time, you'll see the items here correspond, roughly speaking, to what's contained in the project. If you want to add more items to a project, then you can use the Solution Explorer window to do so. If I right click on my Woda project rather than the solution, and I can choose the Add option, and let's say I wanted to add a new Windows form. So I can choose the Windows form option directly, or I could also choose New Item and then browse for it in a dialog box. It's simply just to choose Windows form. And at that point, I'll be taken to a, a new item dialog box where I can select Windows Form, although it's been pre-selected for me. And assuming I didn't want to change its name, I can just click the Add button and that will be added into my project. You can delete items from a project just as simply by right-clicking on the item you want to remove and choosing to delete it. That will delete not just the item from the project, but also from its underlying folder. So if I click OK, and if I had a quick browse back to my desktop and my Woda folder, I'll find that in the Woda project there's no form to item. Rather than deleting an item altogether, you can also choose to simply remove it from the project. So I can demonstrate that by adding a new item to my project. So I can right click on Woda and choose to add. And this time I'm going to choose new item. So we'll see the dialog box appear and you can choose exactly which sort of item to add. Let's add in a class this time. Click the add button. And we see we get a new class called class1 with some code written out for us already. If I quickly look into the Woda folder, you'll see that I get a class1 object listed there. If I then choose to right click on that class and choose to exclude it from the project rather than delete it, I'll find that it disappears from the project, but it still exists in the underlying folder. So this means that I can copy it elsewhere, uh, maybe include it in a different project, or do whatever else I want with it. You can also choose to add an existing item to a project rather than just add a brand new blank one. So for instance, if you've written some code in a class in, a, in another project and you wanted to include that code in your current one, you could choose to import that into the current project. So you could do that by right clicking on the name of the project and then choosing to add, this time an existing item. So when you do that, you'll get a browser dialog box allowing you to browse to where your file is stored. And you can see I'm going to import my class one file, the one that we've just removed from the uh, from the project. So I select it in the list and click Add. It then gets re-included in the project and it's available for use. For this project, actually, I don't want to include that class. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to right click on it and choose to delete it. And then it will be gone for good, including from the underlying Woda folder. As your projects grow, you're likely to end up with many, many items listed in the Solution Explorer. So before you begin adding more items, it can be useful to think about how you'd like to organize them. Rather than seeing things in one just great big gigantic list, you can use folders to store different groups of items. So for example, if I wanted to create a folder that might store my future forms, I could right click on the Woda project and choose to add a new folder. I can give it a new name, which I'm going to call Forms. And then any subsequent forms that I want to add to my project, I could right click on the Forms folder and choose Add. Windows Form, and then click Add, and the form will be inserted into that folder. Now, if you add items to a folder, it does change somewhat the way you reference those items in the code that you write. So I don't know if you can notice here, I've got two forms in my project now called Form 1. Because my second form, the one that I've just added, is stored within a separate folder, its name is still unique in its own scope. So within the folder, it's got a unique name. 
If I right click the forms folder again and chose to add another new form, Windows form, and then click add, that name will be unique again. So I've got form one and form two in the forms folder. Now this means that you do have to be careful about moving items in a project. For instance, if I wanted to move my form one object from the forms folder and place it at the level of the project, I've already got a form in the project at that level called form one. So if I click and drag to move the object and drop it on top of the project name, I'll get a warning saying that I've already got a file that exists with that name in that scope. So I can't do that. I could of course move form 2 because that has a unique name in both the forms folder and at the level of the project. So if I click and drag form 2 to the Woda project name, I'll find that form 2 now sits outside of the folder. And that's because it had a unique name. And I can again drag it back into the folder by just clicking and dragging and dropping it on the forms folder. If I can collapse then the forms folder so I can collapse all the items in that folder in one go, which makes it nice and easy to organize and view the items in your project. Although I've just shown you that it is possible to move items from folder to folder into different scopes, it is one of those things that you should try to avoid if at all possible. And that's because behind the scenes, the way that you reference items in code changes depending on which folders they belong to. So if there is code already written that references one of your objects and then you decide to move it, the code will no longer correctly reference the object that you've moved. I can demonstrate this very quickly with the form one object. If I open up the program file, we'll see that there's a line of code in here that tries to run a new instance of the form one object when we run the application. That means that if I decided to rename or move this object, then this line of code would no longer work the way it's intended to. So that's one reason you have to be very careful about moving items which already exist. For the same reason, you have to be quite careful about renaming things in your project as well. It's always more sensible to give an item a unique, sensible, descriptive name when you create it, rather than decide to change that later on. Now, there are some safeguards in place when you choose to rename objects. So, for instance, if I wanted to change the name of Form 1, we didn't get a choice about what that form name would be. It was generated for us automatically. If I decide to change it by right-clicking on the object and choosing to rename, then First of all, I have to make sure that I don't change the extension. So it must retain the .cs, cs for C sharp, of course. Um, and I, if I want to change its name, let's call it Woda Application. When I hit enter to rename it, I'm going to get a warning that I'm renaming an object that might already have references to it. So I get the option to update all of the references in the entire project to the item called previously called Form 1. So what you'll see here if I click the Yes button is that where this was previously referenced Form 1, this will now change to reference the new name of the object. Now it's very easy to forget to do that or accidentally click the No button, in which case you'd have to manually hunt down all the references to your Form 1 object and update them yourself. So again, as well as being careful about moving items, also be careful about renaming them too. In the final part of this video, I just want to quickly talk about how to close and reopen projects, which probably sounds a little bit patronizing, but there are one or two things that are worthwhile knowing. First of all, I'm going to close down all the, the windows that I have open except for my Woda application form. And the quickest way to do that, rather than by clicking the crosses at the top of each individual window, is to right click one of the window tabs and choose close all but this. So that leaves me with that one single form open, just as though I'd begun my project from scratch. To close the solution and the project down, the simplest thing to do, I suppose, is to close down Visual Studio altogether by clicking the cross in the top right-hand corner, or heading to the File menu and choosing Exit, which will close down Visual Studio as well. If I want to keep Visual Studio open and just close down the solution, then there's an option in there that will allow me to do that, about halfway down, Close Solution, and if I click that option, the solution will close down, but Visual Studio remains open. To reopen a project that I've just been working on recently, I can head to the File menu and choose the option called Recent Projects and Solutions. There's also an option for Recent Files, which gives me access to an individual file like program.cs, but the file itself there isn't much use without the solution and the project to which it belongs. So I want to open up the entire project, the entire solution, so I can choose Recent Projects and Solutions and choose to open it. 
if I hadn't worked on that project recently and I wanted to open it, then if I close it down using the file menu in closed solution, I can also use the file menu and choose open project if I want to browse for one. So if I choose this, I can then browse to my Woda folder on my desktop and I can choose to either open up the solution file, which will open up all the projects stored within it, or I can double click into the Woda folder and open up just that project stored within there. So I can open up the project file instead. I'm going to go back to the Woda folder and open up the solution file, which will open up any other projects associated with the solution. And then one more way you can get your project to be opened up is to get it to be opened up automatically. So this is something we mentioned briefly on in the first series, first video in the series. If you head to the tools menu and choose options, in the environment section there's a startup section and you can choose what happens when you first open up or when you open up Visual Studio. So but I've got mine set to show an empty environment, but I could set it so that it always loads the last loaded solution. So if I select that option and click OK, and then close down Visual Studio altogether, I can then head to the Star menu, and all programs, and find Visual Studio. And when I choose to open it up, it will automatically open up the last project and solution that I was working on. So there we go, we get the Woda solution opened up. That's kind of useful if you're working on one single project or one single solution frequently. But for me, I work on quite a lot of different projects. So I tend to have mine set to open up an empty environment and then I choose which one to open up. So I'm going to go back to the tools menu, choose options, head to the startup section and choose uh, to show an empty environment when I open up Visual Studio. So that's the end of the video about working with basic projects and solutions. We've looked at how to create a new project, how to use the Solution Explorer to manage the items in it, and a couple of quick options for closing and opening the projects as well. If you like what you've seen here, why not head over to the YSL website where you can find loads more free resources, including these videos, some written blogs and tutorials, and even some exercises that you can download to practice your skills. Thanks for watching. See you next time.